Welcome to another episode of Kibari in Focus. In this episode, we're going to be looking at a Sakasa Kibari pattern. Um, there's quite a few anglers use something like this. This one's very similar to one I've seen, Masami Saka Kibari Tai. Uh, it's one of my favorites for manipulating on big rivers. Um, we're going to be using some pheasant, hen pheasant wing for a hackle. Um, I've got some camel 60 thread from Unithread as the thread. I'm using a size 10 fish on nymph wet hook. It's got quite a long shank, which is great for building up that sort of big profile. And for a black dubbed body, I'm using some fish on NBC dubbing. That stands for nymph bug caddis in black. So we'll start by getting a bed of thread on the hook. And this fly has got a really nice little step in the tying that helps you to get extra strength in your hackles when you're tying big soft hackles. So I want to get to the point where I would start making a head on the fly. So the, the hackle's going to start here and go backwards from there. So we've got a hen pheasant feather and we're going to prepare this before tying it in. I'm going to tie it in at the sort of pointy end and wrap it from there. But first I want to get rid of these fluffy feathers. Just peel them off. Same amount on both sides. And we've got that extra bit of feather there. I think that's called the phyla plume. We'll pull that off. And I've got a horrible scabby bit of feather that was stuck in the skin of the bird as well. So I'll trim that off, give us the whip finish tool, something to hang on to. And then I'm going to stroke out the fibers until I've got roughly the right amount of fibers that I would like to see in this particular fly and I'd say that's roughly the right amount of fiber so that's the tip of the feather gives us a nice tying in point where the sort of angles change and then these are all the fibers that we want to see in our fly so I'm going to point that down back down the fly and tie that in an added bonus of doing it this way is you get all these feather fibers to help build the bulk of the body up, giving us a nice solid body. Now you can leave those if you want at the back end or you can trim them off. I'll just give it a quick haircut because I'm gonna be putting some dubbing on there. And then I'm gonna come back up to a few millimeters away from where I've tied in. And this next step, we'll find out later why it's so important, but for now, what we want to do is we want to get the turns of this feather going backwards stepping backwards down the fly so a great way to make sure that all your hackles face the right way it's kind of stroke them forward and you can even wet your fingers and kind of like trying to tame a bit of uh, unruly hair on the top of your head just a little bit of moisture there and it sort of slicks things down so i'm working my way back down the body of the fly with these turns getting all those hackle fibers facing forwards. So that's got a nice big bunch of hackle going on there. It's all facing forwards at the minute, but when we start brushing it out, it will all stand up in a minute. As I'm tying off the stem, um, kind of slowly rotating around until it's facing back down the fly and again we can use that stem just to get the fly a bit of extra mass if you've never used pheasant before don't try and snap it it is pretty tenacious quite often you can end up pulling the fly out of the vise before it snaps so we've got this nice body and hackle thing going on what we need now is a pinch of dubbing. This dubbing's got some nice natural fibers in and some nice synthetic fibers. So it'll give you a little bit of iridescent flash as well as some nice sort of spiky bits and some nice kind of woolly bits. So it absorbs a bit of water gives you that sort of neutral buoyancy. And fans of any of our 
fly tying media will know I'm fond of sticky out bits on flies as well and it does give you a bit of extra sticky out fibres down the body of the fly you can never put two little dubbing on in one go and you're much better to keep adding a bit and building up the body than putting far too much on and having to start stripping it off when you get near the top of the fly so this should be the last bit that I add now and I just want to finish off right behind those fibres so it's tight to those fibres then I can use this half inch tool just to open those fibres out and you may be able to see that there's lots of sort of steps going back it's not just one blob of hackle in one place it actually sort of got turns going backwards so now when we come forwards if we just move our thread like this as we turn the thread actually goes down in amongst those hackles and it's locking down the hackles making the fly much more secure you may find that they need sticking back up again halfway through if you don't have one of these tools you can strip the nib out of a big biro and you've got an instant half hitch tool which is great for straightening those hackles out and when you've cut through all of that fiber you you've locked down these soft hackles and it makes for a much much longer lived fly if you've got toothy trout in your river and you're catching a lot trout keep getting all of this uh, hackle that it'll eventually get chewed through and that little trick of running your thread through it at the end assuming that you've done it the opposite direction so that your threads in opposite turns to your hackle you'll get this wonderful resilient hackle tie it on a big hook with a nice big feather like this and you've got one hell of a tantalizing mouthful for manipulating on stream So a quick whip finish there and I'll put on a few blobs of varnish just to protect that head and then there we are nice big bushy hackle well protected by a layer of thread big bushy body that's a great mouthful of a fly brilliant for manipulating on big streams uh, the trout absolutely love that fly.